the power of the mind is limitless. And my near-death experience taught me the relationship between our thoughts and our reality and how to remove these negative thoughts so that we can start using our mind in a very powerful, creative way. Hi, I'm Barbara Ireland. So I'm going to sign up for a camp that pushes your boundaries, that you develop courage, you break through you know, obstacles in your mind. And I signed up for that. So months later, I went to this camp. Well, the last actual day of this camp, the last formal day, was an endurance exercise. And it required carrying bricks, and it was in the hot sun, and it was long. Halfway through this exercise, I started feeling my legs wobble, and my senses started scrambling so that I could hear people really far away, but I couldn't hear the partner that was right next to me. Or I could hear her I, sounds, but I couldn't decipher what she was saying. I would get bits and pieces, but it was all jumbled up and echoey, and uh, I couldn't discern them. There were flashes of light everywhere. Um, so I thought, oh, I'm, I need more water. I must be you know, dehydrated. So I was drinking more and more water. I sat down on the ground and this, this man showed up who was not a formal medic. So I'm laying there under this tree and my best friend who found me is lying there, is sitting there with me. And one at a time, each of my four limbs just went numb, just went offline. I couldn't feel them anymore. I couldn't move them anymore. So I, I felt trapped. I felt like a torso and a head laying there helpless, which was, I can't even tell you how terrifying that was. And I started not exactly screaming, but yelling to my friend and crying and saying, I can't feel this. You know, it was just really, really terror. And, um, in the midst of that, I was feeling this puffy sensation moving out of the top of my head. And I had read enough about spiritual subjects, I guess, to know that at the point of death, at least some people have said that they feel their life energy leaving out of the top of their head. And when I started feeling that, that's when I became more afraid. Uh, but I didn't have time to ponder that much because a movie started playing. It was very odd because it was a movie of my life, like a memory from two weeks earlier at a band rehearsal. I was in a band with my brother and it was a very chaotic rehearsal and uh, there was conflict going on and I was kind of checking out just really not wanting to be there in that rehearsal so I was having a conflict with my brother and this movie was like a memory and that it was replaying but it was completely unlike a regular memory because it was not spotty, it was clear as a bell. I could see every detail. I could remember everything going on. And I was also in it. At the same time I was watching it, I was also in it. It was like replaying a moment of my life, going back in time, but also viewing it like a movie. Very different. And at one point, this movie freeze framed and it just stopped. And a voice I've never heard before that was an internal voice, but not the voice of my normal, the voice of my head said, what were you thinking at that moment? 
And that that whole scenario that was happening right then, this movie and the voice, completely stopped my crying. It's like it brought me to such a moment of like, what's happening here? That I, I just thought about it and I answered the question. And the moment I answered the question, the scene went away and a new movie started playing. And that one showed me, or I saw myself raise my eyebrow to somebody and it freeze framed and it said, what were you thinking that made you raise that eyebrow? And I answered that and it went away. Another one showed and I put my head down in the scene again with another human being and it freeze framed and said, what caused you? What were you thinking that that major you put your head down? And this went on for hours. They asked mostly, I would say 99% of the time, the questions were about what was I thinking? A couple times they were, what were, what were you feeling at that moment? And the funny thing is a couple times I tried to lie and make myself sound better than I actually was because it was something that wasn't very nice that I was thinking in my head. And the voice that I was talking to just was, there was no problem with that, but I couldn't continue until I answered truthfully. It would just say, are you sure about that, Barbara? But no judgment, just neutral, kind, gentle voice. Well, this went on for several hours. As I now look at that and have told this story to people who have researched near-death experiences um, for many, many years, this is a life review. It was my version of a life review. And at the end of it, this being said, you now have a choice, Barbara. Would you like to stay or would you like to go? And I knew that meant, do I want to continue dying and actually leave this realm? Or do I want to come, go back into my body and continue my life? And I, I tell you, Vivian, that that was such an interesting moment because I think most people would say, well, that's obvious. You want to go back and keep living. No one wants to die. I mean, that's what we all fear. We don't want to die. But the truth is, I had one foot here and one foot there at that moment. And I knew what both life and death felt like in that moment. And I knew that I knew what life felt like. I know all the joys here, the color, the food, the friendships, the creativity, the just normal everyday. It's just an interesting place to be. But the other side, when I think about that, I get chills every time. I'm feeling it right now from my head to my feet these chills, because we do not have this, the feeling that's over there, we do not have it here, at least I've ever experienced. And it's a form of love that's unconditional. That word is so stock and it almost has no meaning anymore, unconditional love, but real unconditional love when you feel that it's um it is life changing i will never forget that feeling it's the most welcoming kind comforting non-judgmental accepting it's like the feeling of someone just wrapping their arms around you who loves you more than you could possibly ever understand. Every aspect of you, your faults, your highlights of your character, everything you've done, everything you've failed at, it's all fine. 
And I was inching towards that. I, I was like, that's way more. <laughs> that feels a lot better than it does in, in Earth. And um, But I asked questions of this voice. I asked questions about my unfinished prod, prod, projects. I asked questions about relationships, some that needed to be healed, things I might need to still say to people, things I still wanted to do, what was important about life as a human. And those conversation, that conversation was just amazing, powerful. But through the, that dialogue, I decided to come back. And the moment I said, I want to come back, I, well, first I was told I need to talk to four different people in my life. If I chose to come back, I had to do this within the first week I was back and I had to promise. And I did do this. And it was telling them a lot of the things that I was questioning, don't I need to do this? Telling the people I love them. Telling another person, I'm so sorry for something I did. Reconnecting with one other person and not even making a big deal out of it. That one I was told to just call every week for, you know, even five minutes. Just start re stitching together a relationship. Another one was to tell them how much gratitude I had towards um, opportunities they had given me in my life. And I agreed to do those things. The, sec the second I said, okay, I'll go back and I'll do those things. Instantly that feeling of life energy leaving my head reversed and I started feeling it come in, and I felt like my body was being more reanimated again. I felt each of my limbs starting to tingle, to come back with life. And after several minutes of that, I opened my eyes and I saw Vivian, this world that we're in here on Earth, with eyes of a baby, but as an adult, who's fully conscious, but as if I'm seeing it for the first time. The colors here, the sunlight that had gone way down by then, and it was this low auburn glow. The birds I was hearing singing, the tree I was under, rustling its leaves and the color of it with the sun filtering through that onto me. It's the most incredible place that we get to be here. And for the whole first month that I was back, I was in a state of bliss or rebirth or whatever you want to call it. It was seeing this place with very fresh, grateful eyes. And I loved everything about it. I loved even, I had a bad dream and I loved having a bad dream. And I loved the flavor of things. I could hear music through my whole body, not just through my ears. I loved on everybody. I would walk down the street and smell every flower and I would smile and say hello to everybody. I fell in love with everything and everybody and fully in love with myself. And that lasted for about a month. And then I started hearing worry come back into my head and some self-doubt come back into my head. Then old resentment started bubbling up. And I thought, yeah, that person did me wrong. You know? And I was, oh no, wow, those thoughts are coming back. I started hearing music through my ears and not through my whole body. I started doing other things while I was eating instead of really, really tasting my food. And I realized this blissful state was disappearing 
like sand through my fingers. And I thought, oh no, I loved it so much. What am I going to do to get it back? How can I feel that joy again? And especially these negative thoughts that reminded me of being on stage when I was touring and I heard that radio playing the Hating on Barbara Ireland station. And I thought, really, honestly, I went through a near-death experience and that camp and all the work I've done on myself throughout my life, and I still have these thoughts. And I was not happy about that. So I sat down at that moment and I said, okay, what happened during that experience? What was that weird thing that happened to me? And I thought about every question that was asked for those hours during those movies. And I realized they were all about my thoughts. And I started stitching together the whole experience. And I saw that it was this guide I had. Bless this guide. It was showing me, he was doing his best to show me the correlation between how we think and what happens in our life. How do I think about relationships? What do I think, what goes on in my head about love? What goes on in my head about money? How, does the, how do these thoughts I have about relationships, love, health, money, the places I live, the things I want to do in my life, how much I doubt or have confidence in myself. How much are these thoughts affecting my outer world? Well, it turns out they, they place just an, an alarming huge degree in our experience of, of the world. I think that's one of the lessons of being a human being is to learn how to use this mind that we've been given, that's of just the substance of pure creativity and power. But we don't, we, we misuse it constantly because it's on autopilot. We don't know how to work with this creative force. And so at that point, when I realized this, I said, okay, I am going to figure out how to start using this powerful thing that is my consciousness, my mind, in a way that's going to help me instead of hurt me. And I spent the next three years studying the mind, consciousness, neuroscience, the cellular chemical addiction to negative thinking or, or negative emotions in particular. And how do we break this cycle? Because what I found out is that there are negative thoughts that can come into your head and go out of your head. Just like a normal, you moving through your day and you have a negative thought, but there's another kind of negative thought that when it goes in our head, we latch onto it and we grasp it and we make it ours and we start going on that hamster wheel. And these negative thoughts I call mind loops because they loop on and on and on. And for me, worry was one of my biggest ones. Worrying about a family member all the time, worrying what other people thought of me, worrying if I was going to do something correctly or it just went on and on and on. Well, as I was doing this study around negative thinking and mind loops, I realized if I could break this pattern of the loop, this cycle of constantly thinking about whatever this problem is in my life, that maybe things would be different. And I experimented on that. And I found out a method that worked for me that as soon as that negative thought started 
doing its cycle on me, I interrupted it and broke the pattern. And I could go on with my day without having to loop on that anymore. And guess what happened? Every aspect of my life started shimmering, started becoming more joyful, more abundant, healthier, higher energy, more creativity. Well, I was actually, I was pretty creative before too, but whenever I'd feel depressed, I wasn't creative. So in that sense, the creativity was more sustained. And I felt levels of joy I had never encountered before. Two different times, there was a moment where I thought, I have broken through the ceiling of what I thought was the highest level of joy possible. Two times I broke through that. I, after I, I think two years of this study, I went off antidepressants, which I'd been on for years. My appearance changed a lot. Um, I grew healthier. Fitness was easier. I, I can't even tell you every single relationship not only improved, but was enhanced and filled with joy. I believe that before we become humans, our souls make a, a decision with the other people we're going to share our lives with in a family. And we, we choose each other to come back and experience this life together as mother, father, siblings with specific lessons that will teach us exactly what we need to learn. And the my life growing up with this family was extraordinarily joyful and creative and unique like no other family I've ever heard of. And it was also, as I said, chaotic. And the unique, beautiful, artistic, loving aspects lifted me in so many ways and taught me so much about my own creativity and my own self-love and how to get on in the world. And the chaos showed me all sorts of lessons that I was able to survive and grow in courage and bravery and um, self-esteem and all sorts of things. The method that I came up with to that I call the de-looping method that interrupts these repetitive negative thinking patterns, there's nine steps to it. The book I wrote covers the first four because they're all about the neuroscience aspects of it. And it's they're they're based on research and trial and error on me as the guinea pig. The next set is about releasing negative emotions that are stuck in the body. Mm-hmm. Those to me are when we have difficulties that happen in our life. If we don't allow the emotion to move, and most of us don't, it's too painful or, you know, people say, how are you doing? And we're doing really badly. And we say, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine? Well, actually, in my head, I am suffering, you know. What's happening when we do that, when we discount it, when we push it under the rug, when when we say, I don't want to feel that, It gets jammed as energy. This is how I see it. These pockets of energy get jammed in our body and they're often in our stomach when we get sick to our stomach. They're in our heart. We can feel heartache. They lodge in our heads. We get headaches in our shoulders. We get tight shoulders. They're all over and ends up in also illness can emerge from this arthritis, all sorts of things, because these painful moments in our life uh, don't have release. They're just stuck in there. So then the next phase uh, that I do with 
clients or with groups is to start releasing those emotions. And the key there is when something is really upsetting you, whether it's sadness or fear or anger or disappointment or jealousy or any of these things, to instead of pushing it away, just stop for a minute and relax your entire body and breathe. And when you relax the body, the energy starts moving around and you can feel it when you start tuning in. And you might get chills, you might yawn, you might cry, uh, you might burp. Like it's moving, it's moving. And as you do that, it allows us to not be triggered. We're walking around like tight strings, ready to be triggered by something out there that's similar to something that happened years ago, and we're storing it. And let's say a parent said, you didn't do something right. Well, now we go to our boss's office and they say, oh, you didn't do your assignment right you know, for your job. And we're suddenly triggered and we don't realize it, but that what I call energy packet in our body is being reactivated from something that happened decades ago that we have not allowed to move through us. So I'm going into more detail on this one because it's not in my book, but it's really important. Something that's really easy for anyone to do is every day or how many days a week you're willing to do it before you start your day or any time, just sit down for a minute. You can call it meditation. You can call it whatever you want. Just get quiet for 10 minutes, close your eyes and start allowing whatever energy is in there to start moving. And it helps to focus, like tune into your body. Is there an area that's in pain or stressed or tight? Put your focus on that tight stomach, for instance, or that headache. And just notice it. Don't do anything with it. Don't try to push it away. Don't try to make it dissolve. I call this dissolving the negative emotion. But don't make it do anything. Just exist with it. Let it be there. It just wants to have your attention for a second. So allow it to exist. And as you allow it to exist, it starts to move. It starts to transform. So that's the second phase. And then the last phase of the de-looping method is a very creative aspect. The whole first parts are about cleaning out the way we use our brains, the way we use emotions. But the last part, if you want to talk about manifesting, conscious creating, we start using this powerful, incredible mind in a way that's purposeful, uh, intentional, conscious, and we start tuning in to the powers that are there and waiting for us. But if we're so focused on looping and resentments and how horrible everything is and how we hate our coworkers and our relationships falling apart and, oh, our, my body hurts so much. When we're there, we can't consciously create anything. Our mind is way too busy thinking negative thoughts. So it's really important to clean the thoughts out, then clean the emotions out, and then start creating. What do we want in our life? What do we want out of life? The power of the mind is limitless. And my near-death experience taught me the relationship between our thoughts and our reality and how to remove these negative thoughts so that we can start using our mind in a very powerful, creative way. Thank you so much for watching this today, for being on the other side of this screen, because I always feel the people that are watching 
And if you would like to reach out to me, I can be found at www.howtostopnegativethoughts.com or barbaraireland.com. And I really wish you all the joy in the world.